One of my sites I'm really concerned about, we found three snakes dead in habitat just in the past month that had penstone parasites, one of which had 10 in its lung. Two of the emerging pathogens that impact pygmy rattlesnakes across Florida are lungworms, which are really teleorientalis, which are mostly spilt over from Burmese pythons, but have likely been spilled over with other invasive species like cockroaches and toke geckos. First documented in the Everglades National Park by Melissa Miller. In the earlier 2000s, we started to see it in pygmy rattlesnake populations in Central Florida in 2000. Um, 17, 18, and 2020 were kind of the first sightings, and, and then the snake disease has been here for a while, since the late 1900s. The first detections of pentastomes align with a lot of declines that we're seeing in pygmy rattlesnake populations. Found in 18 native snake species, 14 of which have been published. Pygmies are one of the species that's getting hit the hardest and that could be just based on their diets and as well as the, the lack of a co-evolutionary history. Orientalis doesn't often cause issues in co-evolved hosts. It doesn't really cause issues or pathogenesis or disease in Burmese pythons. And we find pygmies dead in habitat. My first thought is, okay, maybe it has pentastomes. Last year, we found six in habitat all of which were infected, and they were just dead in habitat, which is very odd. You don't really like come across just dead snakes that weren't preyed upon or hit by a car or persecuted. And one of the things that we've been noticing too is like, they'll either be belly up or they'll kind of have their head burrowed down a little bit. When the host is stressed, they move out of the lungs. If they're not getting oxygen from the host or the host is somehow um, stressed, they will come out of the mouth. So sometimes and pinch the piggy's mouth open, you can see them coming out. The one I found today was just like blocking the endotrachea. She was large, she was like 78 millimeters. We've also had quite a few detections in the pet trade, three of which I found just last year. So a breeder and um, a seller of wild caught snakes sold three juvenile snakes to a friend of mine in St. Augustine as education animals and all three of those animals became anorexic and expectorated eggs of Relatilla orientalis within two months, and then they all died. If we're moving snakes nationally and internationally from Florida, maybe that's not that big of a deal and we could have biosecurity measures with that to make sure we're selling clean snakes. Hi, I'm Jenna Palmisano. I am a second year PhD student at the University of Central Florida. Uh, my PI is Dr. Anna Savage, and I'm studying the genomic and physiological impacts of two emerging pathogens on pygmy rattlesnake populations across Florida.